in the scriptures, uh, what, is, what is the name above all names? Yeshua, that's right. Yeah. Our, our Father loves him so much uh, that he raised his name. It said that it, it is the name above all names is Yeshua, which we, uh, is, is in, in common terms in English, we would say Jesus. Um, Yeshua, the name above all names, Ruch Hashem. Um, when we look at the life of Messiah, we, we get little snapshots, little, little snapshots in, in the Gospels. Uh, it's, it's difficult sometimes to read between the snapshots, uh, but a real person walked among us here on earth. Um, a real person uh, came and was born as a child. Uh, not, not concepts, but a real person was born and, and walked. And, and he taught. Um, in the life that Yeshua lived, uh, wh- wh- how would you characterize the climate that he lived in during Israel? Oh, what was that? Politically hostile. Okay, politically hostile. Um, you think that the Jewish people were um, happy about the occupation of Rome? Nope. Um, why was Israel occupied? Disobedience. disobedience. Say it louder. Louder. The disobedience. Disobedience. Um, God, he does things in order to bring about, again, the highest good for. Does God love to discipline? No. He loves because he is love. But he uses the difficult things, the difficult circumstances for a higher good always. Uh, And it is uh, one of the highest prayers for us to be able to say, glory to God for all things, all things. And it's a hard thing to say. It's even harder to have it internalized that we understand that all things are occurring either by his will or his permission for us to be able to have a more full life. And you know what? Because you are a believer, your, your life is not your own. And what happens to you is not always about you because you're part of something bigger. That's what it means to be the, the body of Messiah. Uh, when a cell in a body is affected, it affects the body. When an organ is affected, a limb, it affects the body. We are a part of something greater than just the people in this room or the other rooms and places all over the world right now and tomorrow and other times where people were part of something bigger than what we can see. Can we turn over to at least to the book of the Gospel of John, Yochanan, Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is, um, of the four Gospels, is the most um, transcendent of all the Gospels. Uh, uh, Messiah speaks in this Gospel of very high things, very spiritual uh, things, which it it takes um, an an ability by the Spirit of God to be able to see them and put them into practice. Uh, He is speaking very high things, very uh, very lofty things. Uh, He says in chapter 14, John chapter 14 and verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Okay, he speaks, and this is before he began to experience the, the trial of, of the passion, he was saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Uh, and he's, he's saying these things because he knew that it would echo down into time. And he knew that as soon as he was taken from the earth, that there would certainly be trouble. And his followers his, would be, find themselves in difficult times, as we know from, from history. He says, let your heart not be troubled, You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, that you may also be. He says he has prepared a place for us. And we know this is the the Jewish tradition of uh, the the bridegroom uh, prepares the house before the comes and takes the, the bride in, in order, in, in order to, be, to be married, and he has a place prepared as a part of his father's home. And we see that this is, again, according to what he instituted through the traditions of the Jewish people. 
It says that, um, and where I, where I go, uh, where I go, sorry, where and where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, uh, we do not know where you are going, and how can, you sh- how can we know the way? And he said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He is speaking and saying that um, he is the door. Um, he is the, the avenue, the, the, the road, the path to God. He says it very, very clearly and very plainly that he is the way in which we find ourselves in relation to God. And over in verse 15, down a few verses, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Um, if, you could, if you could think back and immediately what would come to mind to you whenever Messiah said, keep my commandments, what were the commandments that, he, that you they remember him giving? Okay. Um, he says, if you love me, then love others. Uh, if you love me, then follow my commands. And, and the commands are um, like the Ten Commandments. There's, like, there's only like ten of them, but there's like, like you know, a thousand subsets of each of those. Uh, how do we, how do, in, in, in the Ten Commandments, um, you know, how do we show love to God? By not, by not what? Not lying. Okay, seeking other gods. Okay, not not using his name as if it was just nothing. It was it was just a common common uh, you know common speak. What else? What's that? Okay, not coveting, because again, when you covet something, what are you doing? Okay, you've placed that object or person or thing or whatever as an, an idol between you and God. And an idol is simply a, an, another God. Uh, it isn't just an Israel, Israelite problem with seeking another God. It's a human issue, seeking other gods. And so he says very, very plainly, all the Ten Commandments are in alignment with aligning us towards love. And we have to be connected to God through the channel of the Holy Spirit in order to love people fully. And Bill, I know I just said to, to turn the uh, air conditioner down, but now it, it went off. <laughs> I think it went off entirely. This is one of our, our fun challenges. Um, so we, we see that it takes this connection in order for us to, to walk out what God is asking for us. He, but he says that um, um, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and he will send you another helper, that he may live with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live and you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father and that you know, and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments keeps them. It is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. He says that, I will love him and will manifest myself to him. We see that God is saying, if we have love, it will be apparent. It will will be noticeable. How does God, or how does Messiah say that this is how you will know that that you are my disciples? Okay, love for each other, uh, fellow believers. Um, Is it easy to love fellow believers? No. Just like it's not easy to love people who are not believers. Um, in any family, there's always going to be differences. But he says, 
in me and by me, you can and should love one another. That he says that the Spirit's going to come. So I want you to, to think through this. He says, because the Spirit will come upon you, that you will be able to do and accomplish things that are not normal in humanity. Uh, what is the state of someone who does not have the Holy Spirit? What are some qualities of, of a person? Resentful. Okay, resentful, bitterness. Very incomplete. incomplete, yes. What else? Anger. Anger, yep. Okay, hatred. Um, all the things that are the exact opposite of what God says that he wants us to be. Uh, and, and again, um, we're believers. Um, do we still struggle against the old yeah. person? Yep. Until we, until we pass through this earth. All things are being renewed. Uh, renewal is a process. Um, the transformation is a process. You and I uh, are, are not there yet. We still have uh, the, the old nature uh, that struggles and desires to hold on to and be present with us. And it's a struggle against that so that we can be, become a new creation. We're not there yet. We're not complete. We see that in verse 22, it says, um, Judas, or Yehuda, who is, who is not uh, Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Well, Yeshua answered them and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. For he who does not love me does not keep my words and the words which you hear is not mine, but the father who sent me. But these things I have spoken to you while uh, being present with you, but the helper, uh, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Shalom, he says. Um, what is God's shalom? Wholeness. Um, yes, Yeshua is the embodiment of his, of his peace, his shalom. Shalom is the wholeness of person. When we say to each other, shalom, uh, we're, not, we're not saying, hey, peace, brother. That's the world's peace, which is shallow, incomplete, and means nothing. When we say shalom or Shabbat shalom to each other, we're wishing all oh, the wholeness of the person. My brother, my sister, I wish the best for you and the wholeness and may the peace of God be with you. It's not an absence of conflict. It's a wholeness of which we are all fractured right now, struggling, being gripped by many things that Paul tries, strives to pull us away from God, pulls us this way and that way, and sometimes both ways at once. But he says, I am the peace. He says, this is what I leave with you, and this is what I desire for you. He says, you have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. And if you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now that I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father and the Father gave me a commandment, so do I. Arise and let us go. He says, because he knew that it was coming to be time that he was to complete the first part of his mission on earth. He says, the ruler of this world, who is who? Chasetan, the enemy, uh, is, is coming for me. Uh, as he tried many times while, while Messiah was alive. Um, he came to Messiah and he took him through the um, betrayal of one of his own students. And you know, he didn't curse his own student who betrayed him unto death. He didn't say, you rot in hell. He said, 
Go and do what you have to do. Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. And his heart broke. Because he loved Judas. And he said, Judas, is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man? A kiss is a very intimate greeting of love for someone. And he says, you betrayed me? With a kiss. And his heart broke because his disciple had betrayed him. And yet he loved that man. It is, this example that he sent to us was that it is not how things seem. It's how things are in God and what we do with what occurs. To be a follower of Messiah is, is that we are bearers of a tradition that we have been handed down to this very time. It informs us and guides us and helps us to uh, remain connected to God. Our heritage as, as, uh, from, from through Abraham through Messiah to the apostles until this very day we hold as a, a, a pathway, a way to walk in, that gives us the, the continuity and substance to be able to walk out this life. The precious heritage that comes from our Hebrew spiritual ancestry we look and we see that Jew or Gentile, this is your family history. Some of it's really, really awesome, and some of it's not so great. It's a mixed bag, but it's our heritage. It is about remembering and then doing. We look at the prophets and the examples of the other righteous men and women that are there, and they're there for our benefit. They're there to show us patterns of humanity and how you and I can rise above them. That we can be different than we were yesterday. An elder said that you cannot be too kind or too gentle to shun even to be appear harsh in our treatment of others. Joy, radiant streams of joy from the face of that person who gives and kindles joy in his heart is given to the one who receives. All condemnation is from the devil. Never condemn each other. Instead of condemning others, strive to reach inner peace. Keep silent and refrain from judgment. This will raise you above the deadly arrows of slander, insult, and outrage, and will shield your glowing hearts against all evil. We live in a time in which there is no peace. And even the times in which there appears to be, it's simply the rising and flowing of the tides. But as believers, we have access to actual peace, which is the shalom, the wholeness, the process of becoming different. Um, tell me uh, the lives uh, of some of, of the apostles and the first believers. How did they live? Hmm? Okay. Fishermen, simple, simple people. Okay. There was a tax collector. Um, how about after the, the apostles, the first hundred or so, a couple hundred years? How, what were some qualities? What's that? Okay. They, they experienced persecution from uh, a variety of sources. Uh, and, and what were those that were, that were called upon to, to lay down their lives? What were they called? Martyrs. Hey, the martyrs. So martyrios in Greek means witness, like a witness in a, in a court case. Uh, and what does a witness do in a, in, in a court case? Okay, testifies of what they saw. Um, it says in, in the Torah that in the mouth of two or three witnesses that it is established. And so the holy martyrs were those that bore witness to the truth of Messiah. And they laid down their lives and, and they laid their blood in, next to his. Uh, who was the first martyr um, of the faith? Stephen. Stephen, that's right, after Messiah was Stephen. And it says that he was 
there giving witness and telling the truth of what things were and how, how things actually were. And it says that as they stoned him, it says that he had, how was his countenance? Okay, he had serene, he said they had, they had the face of an angel while he was bearing witness and while he was dying, pelted with rocks, curses upon him. And he said, and, and what were his words to, as he died? Lord, have mercy on them. They're insane. They don't know what they're doing. They're not possessed of their right mind. God, have mercy on them. And, and it says that there was somebody there witnessing all of that. And, and, it, and maybe there was a little ray of God's grace at that moment that entered Saul's heart. That it, it was in that moment that perhaps while he held the coats of those that were stoning him and he saw the faith of this one who laid down his life with, without any hesitation. Maybe it was the opening of the ray of grace that entered Saul's heart that allowed him to say, after he got knocked off the horse, Lord, who are you? He knew something significant was happening, as one would do if one was blinded and knocked off a horse. He knew something significant was about to happen, but it was the moment perhaps before that that prepared his heart in order to be hearing and listening. Hard hearts, nothing can get through. What happens when your arteries harden? Okay, no, no blood flow. Um, and if there's no blood flowing, then, then death is nearby. A hard heart is a dead heart. A heart that is, has been enlivened by the Spirit of God is a heart that has been jump-started again. When you came up out of the water, it was the, as if you had your first breath as a new being, a new, a, a new creature. And you, it's when you first became alive. Until the moment that we die, the Spirit of God is drawing us ever more deeply into the mysteries of what it means to be in Messiah. There is never, ever a time in which we can know enough that we can say that I've, I have all this down. Um, we could read the Bible every single day and we could sing songs to God and every single day and there would be still more to find. It, doesn't, it isn't about memorizing, it, it's about applying. So when you... When we look at this, if, if you've ever said, I've heard it all, have you ever said that? You don't have to raise your hand. Have, have you ever said that to yourself or those that are watching now in the service or perhaps um, we'll view this at a later point? Have you ever said, I, I've seen it all, I've heard it all? The fathers say, then you, then you know nothing. I know nothing if, if I think I have it all down. Because the reality is, is that the scriptures never, never change. But I do. And that's why I constantly need to go back to read them and study the words of the fathers. They haven't changed. They're still there. I've changed. Hopefully for the better. And if I haven't, then hopefully it will make me better and, and be able to become more clear. Um, have you ever read perhaps a part of the Old Testament that you know you've read a dozen times before and you read it and you go, huh, I've never read that before. A lot. <laughs> have you read the Gospels? I mean, things that, you know, and most Christians you know, study the New Testament, which is fine. But have you ever read something in the New Testament and you're like, who put that there? I've, I've read that a, a hundred times. Well, you missed it. I missed it. And God is slowly growing our minds to be able to appreciate what he has given to us. And this is the work and part of the, of, the, of the ability of the Holy Spirit to be able to help us to understand. Are you preserving the peace of God within you? Are you, am I, swayed by everything around us, around you or me, that causes us to be unrest at 
be disturbed by this or that. He says that in order to preserve the peace is to walk and live according to God's will. And not just following his commandments, but walking the path that he's called. So here's an example. Um, When you're driving on the road and you, uh, I don't know what you might be doing, but I might be reaching for a cup of coffee or something. And have you ever kind of edged off the road? And what do they have on the side of the road before you get into the grass? What's it called? We're we'll, 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 we're just going to go with ripple because I, that, that sounds the best. And, 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 what, and what does that sound like? Um, so, cup of coffee spilling it everywhere. Uh, why do they put the ripples on the side of the road? Wake to wake you up. Um, if you've ever driven at night um, and you've, God forbid, dozed off and you've, or the guardrails, God forbid, if you because. If you miss the rail or the, the ripples, then the guardrails are, are, are there also to wake you up and help you to come to your senses. When we are unsettled, when we're not at peace, these are like the ripples in the road that God says, wake up, return to me, return to the center, come back to me, and I will be your peace. You see, when we sin, it's like our car going off the road. Um, and, and generally speaking, when you, when you, when you wreck your car in, in the road, uh, off the road, what, what has to happen? You have to have a wrecker, uh, a, a, a tow truck, come pick you up, right? And they have to like, take you someplace. God forbid you to the hospital to heal you. You have to heal your car. Uh, and that's where God says, after each time that we run off the road, we have to come back, come back to the center. Come back and let me heal you a little more so that you can continue your journey. Uh, and this life is a journey. And to figure out where we went wrong. Uh, why is it important to, to figure out where we went wrong? Because you don't want to do it again. Uh, because a road is rarely straight. It has like bends and turns in it. And so we have to know so that when we come to another bend, another event, another this something similar, that we don't run off the road again. When he was about to leave this earth, he accepted a terrible cruelty, Messiah did. He was brutalized. He was slaughtered. And like the Passover lamb, strung up and bled out. Perfect man. Perfect God, perfect blood. And he gave every last drop. And he says, also, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. He wished the best even for those that cursed him. He wished the best that that said, you're the Messiah. Um, We worship you, Messiah. Many of them mocked him. And all he wanted was their healing. All he wanted was for them to be whole again. He wished no evil upon them. He, wished, he, he could have called down an angel to slay them all. He could have called down anything. He could have shown them who's boss. And he did show them who's boss. He showed them what love is by sacrificing himself. And he says, I'm going to give something to you personally. As a believer, I'm going to give you my shalom. And it's like a little flame. You're going to have to hold it really, really carefully inside and protect it because the world will try to blow out your peace. And you have to shelter that that peace so that you don't lose it. Lord, kindle within me your true and authentic love so that by your grace, I can overcome this world, Father, because it's so hard. The grace of God is given to us, but we must strive to protect and shelter. Nothing is worth giving up our peace for. Nothing is worth giving it up. 
Everything that occurs to us in this life is for our benefit. Every negative experience is there for us to learn something from. Did the apostles have an, an easy life? Um, they looked the same. They had the same clothes, which weren't that great. They didn't have a whole lot of, of things that we would probably say are marks of holy people, um, successful people. Uh, but they, they had this investment strategy uh, in which they, they, they took everything and, and they put it into this, um, I guess you could say, um, um, account. Uh, and, they, and they put everything into it. And they invested everything they could into this account that they saw zero return on in this life, except for one thing. They had nothing in the way of physical things. They had nothing to point at to say, yeah, I'm a success. Look at all my stuff. They invested into the account. And the only thing that they were given was one thing. And what was that? The peace of God while they walked this earth. That was the sign that God gave to his followers and to his, his apostles. Does it mean that they were perfect? Nope. Does it mean they, did, they weren't afraid sometimes? Nope, they were. And when they were, they had to again return to the center, and return to the one, the one who has and gives this wholeness and this peace. They invested everything. And by all accounts, they had nothing to show for it except a peaceful countenance at, at their death. And many of them died as martyrs. But the investment then paid off immediately after their death. Um, God, we have the parable of, of, of the talents. And, and, and what is the parable of the talents, roughly? What's the story? God gives something to, to each person, and then what happens? What's that? Okay, they're to use it? Okay. Uh, what were the marks of, 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 of the other two besides that were different than the one? What, what did the first two do with? Okay. They invested what they had, and, and something happened. What was that? They got a return. Uh, they invested, and there was this, there was, they multiplied what, what they had been given. And, and what did they do? Yep, it's mine, 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 mine. What did they do? The, this, this is yours. Oh, oh, and by the way, this is yours too. Here, here's what you gave me, God. And, and you know, I, I, I wish I, I could have done more, but here's what I have t to give back to you as well. And he said to the one uh, who had been given one thing, what, what do you have for me? Here you go, God. I'm giving back to you what you gave me. And, and did he stop there? Did the, did the ungrateful servant stop there? No. What did he say? You're a hard master. I was afraid. <laughs> you are unreasonable, God. And so I, I knew that. So uh, I knew I couldn't really do a whole lot. So I just buried this over here because I, I could know I could give it back to you here. And he said, you wicked and lazy servant. Even if you, you thought that I was this way and you, you should have deposited it, you should have done something with it. Even if it was just something mediocre to give me a return. God has invested in you and in me. What are we going to give back to him? What will we offer back to our God when we stand before him? What will we be able to say to Christ when we stand before him? God, you, you gave me these things and I, 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 I took what you, what you gave me, God, and I, I, I invested them in these ways. I invested in people, I invested in, in the souls of, of those that I prayed for and uplifted. I invested what you gave to me in forgiveness and in mercy. 
I invested what you have invested in me, in other people. I forgave people I didn't want to, and I showed mercy to people that struggled to think they deserved it. But God, I'm giving away what you gave to me and that I do not deserve. I'm sorry, I wish it was more, Father. And Christ will take the humility, if that's how he finds us, and he'll say, you know what? Appreciate what you did and what you, what you sacrificed because you knew that it was what I desired from you. Oh, by the way, I'm going to show you what else you've done. And he's going to pull back this curtain of the thousands of other things that you and I just aren't good enough to remember that we did righteous actions and kindness and mercy that we can't see and, and that we don't need to see it because we don't need to rest on anything of the past. We only need to take the next step forward in showing what God is to us and how we can show God to others. Are we showing the peace of God in this life? The reality is, is that most people are anxious because they can't control something. The economy is uncertain. I can't control that. I'm, it's, it's uncertain. I can be anxious about this. Um, all the different situations and things that I can't control it. And that causes me, you know, I, I'm, I'm upset about that because I can't control it. God has got it. My sustenance and my peace does, does not and cannot rest in, in what I think I can see but trusting in God. God has gotten us this far. Amen? Uh, we've all gone through things. We've all struggled and suffered in some ways. But God has got this. The more that we hear that sound of the unsettledness, come back to the center. My child, come back. Rest in me. And you know what? We may hit that, those ripples or that guardrail a thousand times before we leave this earth. But it's how we are found at that moment. It's how we have been preparing. Um, investment is a long-term strategy. How are you and I investing? The peace of God is a beautiful thing, and it is there for each of us if we desire it. Assuredly, just as we miss the sound of a gentle wind blowing through the trees during a busy day, so we miss and take for granted the peace of God that is all around us. Pray in silence, flee from sin, stay on the path that is according to God's will. Guard your eyes and your ears and allow yourself to give up control and trust in, in God. Truly, then we can have the peace of God which surpasses all understanding and which will fill our minds and our hearts. May we hasten to purchase, hasten to purchase imperishable works of mercy and righteousness with the gold of our time, that we offer up to God a harvest of tenfold for the grace and the mercy he has given us in this journey. Amen. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Grant us today what we need to be able to press forward O oh Lord, to heal the past and to move forward into the glorious future that you have prepared for each of us. O oh Lord, that we would not move back or fall backwards, but rise and move towards you like the son who came to his senses. O oh Lord, in your mercy and in your purpose, oh Lord, may today be the first day that we step forward. We thank you for all that you're doing, O oh Lord. May you guard us and keep us and watch over your believers over all this earth. And may the fathers and the mothers above us who watch over us, may, by their prayers, may you draw us ever closer to you. Amen.